Heads and you rockers. I hope you guys are keeping your horns up. I'd like to give a shout out real quick to my current subscriber list. I'm up to 386. So thank you for everyone's support. I do appreciate it on this channel. I'm Al Ditton. I'm with Underground Noise Webzine. This is episode number 82. I'm here with Jason Flippo from the band called Quinta Essentia. Welcome, Jason. How are you doing tonight, bro? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for giving me a portion of your time and welcome to my show. Thank you for having me on the show, Alexander. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'd like to give a shout out to Lee Harrison for helping me set up this interview with you. He's oh, yeah. Lee's a great he's, friend. Yeah, sure. he's definitely a very good friend of mine. First question I would like to ask you, Jason, is how old were you when you first started playing guitar? Uh, when I first started, I actually started as a bass player, um, and I was about 12 years old. And, uh, yeah, so um, started out, you know, my heroes play. You know, those were, uh, you know, found great inspiration in uh, watching my heroes uh, perform and listening to their music, you know, even at that young of an age. You know, I couldn't play that well then, you know, um, just started to learn and, you know, grew from there. That's awesome. How did you hear about Quinta Essentia or have you been with them the whole time? So Quinta Essentia, um, uh, we started in around 2004. And uh, so our when we did our first album, uh, you know, uh, I was living in, in Alabama at that time as well. Um, but yes, uh, I started Quinta Essentia and it's kind of, uh, myself and, uh, you know, Matt Barnes, uh, has been there, uh, you know, since, since the very beginning as well. We, we did have one album before Matt joined. Um, and then Eric, you know, he's the current drummer now, but yes, uh, I've been there since, since the beginning. Yeah, I figured I'd ask because I'm not very familiar with your music. So I heard a small portion of it on YouTube earlier today. I was really blown away. I was like, wow, this sounds like progressive metal mixed with black metal and death metal influences. What bands would you sell, say help shape your sound? Um, you know, uh, I would say the, you know, those heroes. Uh, it goes back to that with uh, just being inspired to play music. Um, and uh, the artistry of just, you know, um, what you get out of, um, you know, composing. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, I, I mean, of course, bands like Black Sabbath, um, uh, w that was the early days of what inspired me to want to play. And uh, people like uh, Marty Friedman or, you know, uh, even Emperor or Dissection, uh, a lot of the Norwegian bands. Norwegian black metal bands, uh, some of, uh, of course, Swedish death metal bands too, you know, Entombed, um, uh, stuff like that, Dissection, of course, too, you know, and uh, let's see, I'd say, uh, you know, Possessed, bands like that, Slayer, Megadeth, you know, I am probably would say the Black Sabbath is one of the bands that I would, uh, you know, completely nerd out about and listen to every era, every vocalist and give it its own due, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would say all that shapes the sound. Um, but I, I want to thank you for having, having us on, uh, not having known the music. Um, I hope, I hope that, uh, you know, uh, doing this interview will have, uh, uh, give us the visibility for many more people to check us out. We've been going for 20 years, almost 20 years. Um, kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of like my brainchild in a way in a kind of a journey you know uh, we poured everything into it for a really long time um uh you know while we were all working uh burning the candle at both ends kind of thing you know i knew i recognized you from somewhere jason you play with bloodstained dusk too right yeah uh actually for, uh since uh since 2000 so for a really long time yeah because i remember meeting you at the crusader show with inhuman condition Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's where I remember. Right. Yep. Yep. That's where I got that shirt pulverized by Warhammers, the very first one that they came out with. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I remember from that show. I remember your face 
uh, of course, you know, when I, when I saw, uh, when I uh, saw you online and I was like, what do I know him from? So there's connected the dots, man, for sure. Um, oh, I know C brother. It's been a couple of years. Here we are kicking ass. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I really appreciate, um, you know, you checking out and genuinely, uh, you know, we've poured everything into our music for a long time. So uh, I would like to encourage anyone who's checking out this interview to, you know, give it its due. I would say uh, that th these days, uh, you know, we've been doing it for a long time. This is our fourth album. Uh, but these days, I would say if you like um, anything from um, Emperor Opeth or like even uh, some of the more musical influences, like people like, uh, you know, uh, Friedman or Jason Becker, some of that shrapnel records kind of stuff from back in the day. But, uh, you know, for the sake of of putting musical pieces together, not for the sake of just shredding, you know, stuff like that. But I would even say Pink Floyd is an inspiration on this on the new album. So you could take like psychedelic type influences and 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 of course, like black metal and death metal. And because it's got the rage, it's got the fury, you know, but it's also got this uh, other element of things you might hear in like things like Dio and Maiden, like vocal harmonies and acoustic uh, layered parts and lots of double guitar work and trade off solos and different types of vocals that uh, change with uh, what you might hear going on musically. Speaking of Black Sabbath, don't they have an anniversary today for their self-titled album? Oh, the first one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Was shout it? out to Ozzy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He just stopped touring. Or, I've well, I guess he stopped touring a long time ago, but um, officially announced it. Over 50 years of doing something like that, I could only imagine how brutal he might be. But at the same time, if he's got the strength to do it, more power to him. Absolutely. I would have loved nothing more than uh, to be able to see uh him perform live but you know uh he's put the miles on <laughs> yeah you can say that again <laughs> yeah Jason, my next question for you bro would be uh how do you sustain your energy when you're on stage uh and i would say uh you know so, so i'm playing guitar and singing which um is you know a lot of takes a lot of endurance and you know, uh, I would I would say just staying healthy as I can when I, when I'm not on stage, you know, and uh, being able to because you know with singing and playing and playing guitar solos in between vocal parts and stuff like that, it's there's a lot of breathing involved. So I would say focusing on my breathing and uh, you know staying active, those kinds of things for sure. Staying hydrated is a good rule too. Absolutely. Lots and lots of water. Yeah. Because you don't want to yeah. go on stage drunk or stoned and forget your lyrics or you're feeling sluggish, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, I think there's a when you're when you're putting uh, putting on a performance uh, or, you know, you're going in and you're going in and people have come to see you, you know, you, you owe it to them to give them the highest quality show you possibly can. Um and that's whether you're playing for 20 people or, you know, a thousand people, um, you know, so extracurricular activities have their time and place. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. I totally agree. My next question would be what, what kind of musical gear do you like to use to produce your sound for the music you guys write? Um, uh, right now I have an Engel Powerball 2, which is the tube amp that I'm using, which I love that because um, it's got four channels. I can get great tones. It's very versatile. Um, my uh, main guitar right now that I'm playing uh, for Quinta Essentia is uh, it's an ESP uh, Custom. Um, so it was an early 90s model. Um, it's got a through neck uh and uh let's see what else um i also have a charvel uh guitar which uh, i like that one pretty uh pretty well i haven't seen a charvel in years 
I didn't even know they still existed. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It, it plays really well. Well, the next time I see you in person, I'd like to see her Charvel and see how it looks. Oh, yeah. Well, I could go grab it. It's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. If you want to go grab it, you're more than welcome to. I mean, that's, that's all right. We can finish uh, finish the interview. So I'm, that way I'm not walking around too much, yeah. but I'll grab it in a second if you want. Is that all cool? Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. The next question, Jason, is why do you like extreme metal, black metal or death metal for that instance? I mean, is it the energy behind it? Because for me, it's the energy and it just makes me just want to headbang all night long. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Awesome to hear. Uh, cool. Yeah. I mean, I agree. It's it's something similar for me. And I think that it, um, that resonates with um, with 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 us, you know, with the the, the people who love that type of music. Um the is the high energy um I, so it's that but it's also um there's a certain element of uh you know uh, when you're with music in general you know and it's uh it's equivalent in the modern day you know to a lot of people like to compare heavy metal to, to what classical music was a long time ago you know and I, I i like that thought sometimes in some sense just because of uh the endless possibilities of what you can compose and put together and when you can do that under the banner of heavily distorted guitar harsh vocals double bass high energy music um it, it has a, a high capability to resonate with i think a lot of people and it's very very powerful um so so i think those are the the elements of what makes me love black and death metal um and what got me into it was it's definitely energy and definitely like uh it's a it's a genre that has uh it's limitless you know um whether it's the what you're uh what you're putting into the music uh what, what you're, the way you're writing the music or what you're writing about um you know where you know i think a lot of people it, it can be whatever you want it to be um, a lot of people visualize it as something a lot more closed than that, but, um, and you know, it's gotta be this or it's gotta be that, but I don't think that way. Um, I like for it to be, uh, pretty broad and, uh, endless spectrum of art. Yeah. That's a nice way to put it. I, I really like that answer. That's, that's awesome, dude. Cool. Very much so. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Who came up with the name Quinta Essentia? Um, I came up with it uh, back, you know, in the early days. Uh, so it's it means uh, it's Latin for the fifth essence, um, which uh, you know is the spirit above the four elements. You know, um, but it, the concept of the band has kind of evolved into this uh, spiritual alchemy kind of thing, where you know the songs even kind of go through the seven step. Or there's there's a song actually on our last album initiate to the great work called master of masters that uh, talk, it goes to the seven steps, the alchemical transformation, you know, which is, you know, uh, something that, you know, you can read a lot about in history and, um, uh, you know, you'll hear it called pseudoscience in a lot of ways, but it, as far as alchemy goes, but, um, you know, each, each step has its own um, metaphorical, um, uh, spiritual you know connection kind of uh, metaphor to its chemical uh, uh reaction type thing but you can read more about it but uh, the, uh those kind of concepts are, are kind of what you know what some of the uh, what, what some of the songs are about like on the new album uh like there's a song called akasha which is um about the akashic record which is like the uh past, present, future of all human experience and events like stored in the aether, like, uh, you know, kind of all mystics from all over the world have uh, referenced this in their ancient writings, the Akashic record, um, and kind of making this metaphor between Akasha and, uh, you know, this stored information from all past, present, future of human events into this, uh, you know, the way we store information currently and with our current technology and and pretty much everything is stored in the past, the past, present, uh, and 
and and maybe even the future is stored in uh in you know the the cloud now or the uh you know what we what we use as the internet you know but i don't really speak of it in that way in the song it's more of like a from a esoteric or like a mystical uh perspective but tells a story that makes sense cool everyone's got their own story about things you know Oh yeah, well, oh, I just like uh, concept. Uh, concept music is pretty cool to me, you know. Um, you know, of course, it's all, always about the song too, you know. But uh, but the lyrics and the uh, and the the music telling a story is uh, one of the things that always uh, inspired me from the beginning. Kind of makes me feel like listening to Dream Theater's album Metropolis Part Two, scenes from a memory. Oh yeah. yeah, that's an amazing concept album. If you're into those guys at all, yeah, I always love uh, Petrucci. You know, um, I remember you know uh, back in the VHS tape days, I had a, a, a video of him doing uh, some of the. I think it was one of those hot licks videos where they're you know they do the instructional videos where they go through licks and oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. so oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I like Dream Theater a lot. The overdubs by Adam O2 are hilarious on YouTube. If you haven't seen those yet, you got to check them out. What was that? The overdubbed Adam O2 psycho exercises. Okay. <laughs> it just does an overdub of John Petrucci's voice and says that he's like potatoes and small mammals as a steady diet. And I'm just like, that's too funny. <laughs> I'm like, potatoes and small mammals? Who the hell did this? <laughs> then you hear Petrucci. Diet, potatoes you know, and small mammals. <laughs> hey, that's not too bad of a diet, I guess, you know. Hey, rabbits, squirrels, gerbils, I don't know, whatever his forte is. Go at him, O2. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a hunter-farmer diet. <laughs> Sounds like a hunter-farmer diet. You know, grow your own potatoes and vegetables and, you know, shoot the squirrels in your front yard. <laughs> your backyard live, live off the <laughs> land right <laughs> yeah a whole new meaning oh man i love to backpack and, and hike and those kinds of things those things are inspirational for music too you know oh absolutely getting some fresh air going out in the wild and just being one with nature that's always exciting i can totally oh, agree with you there yeah i always heal anything that way absolutely you know? Well, my next question for you would be, what can fans expect from this new album that you guys are putting out? Is there going to be anything new or anything different? Absolutely. So our new album, Evolution of Ethereal Wisdom, um, it's going to be out this year. And it's absolutely the, our pinnacle of what, we, what we've put together as musicians in our entire you know history. Um, so... Uh, I encourage anyone to to check it out. It's we've got nine new songs. Um, we're really excited about it. Um, uh, it's you know, I would say it's a con concept album, but I wouldn't say it's you know, uh, you know, uh, to the point of like Dream Theater or The Wall or so you know something <laughs> like like those. It's not that. It's not, you know, they're uh, the songs aren't. Uh, aren't that long it's you know it's uh we, we weren't trying to you know redo uh you know uh of something you know some kind of crazy uh movie type <laughs> uh opera rock opera album or something so but it's it's far from that so what what we could expect is uh the best work of our entire history um we um we have songs about uh like there's one called immemorial which is uh, which is about lost civilizations and like uh, ancient history and like far more advanced potentially than where we are today. So people can expect uh, um, expansive music that's experimental and conceptual um, that also uh, yeah, that's that's full of fucking head banging madness and crazy raging songs and great metal and and uh, lots of uh lots of experimental ideas it's it's a uh, it's been a it's been a long uh journey putting it together so we're excited to get it out there 
that's really cool. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it later on sometime. Thank you. Uh, the reason I, uh, I wanted to correct about the, the concept is that it's, although it's vital and important, the conceptual piece, you, it can still, it's still songs that can grab you and it's, you know, it's uh, straight to the point as well, you know. That's the best way to be straightforward all the way. Yeah. Cool. Dude. <laughs> what would you like to say to your fans out there in the world? Uh, we're looking to get out and uh, play shows and uh, we hope to see people out on the road when we uh, get this album out and do shows and stuff. Uh, Uh -oh. You know, please uh, check us out if you haven't heard us before um, and uh, and and reach out to us and, uh, and tell us your thoughts about it. We want to hear what you think. Yeah, I think you guys can really make any headbanger a believer that you guys are definitely one of the most amazing bands out there. Uh, thanks, man. I think I, I really do feel like, uh, you know, better any any. Uh, the music speaks for itself more than any, any, anything I can do to describe it. Um, I can try, but um, I, I would want people to encourage people to go and check it out for themselves. Um, and uh, with an open mind and know that it's, it's not going to sound like what a lot of other things they've heard before. I think. That's awesome. I see you got a cow skull behind your head. Oh yeah. You like, yeah. To, you like to collect stuff like that? Yeah, um, well, um, I don't have very many, but I have that cool one. Um, but yeah, I like to collect some some pretty cool stuff. Uh, um, you know, uh, vinyl and yeah, swords. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I collect all sorts of stuff myself. I collect, you know, basically uh, video games, for an example, you know. So cool. I like to play video games every now and again. I've been playing Borderlands 3 lately, but I got stuck, so I'm going to take a break for a while you now and just do what I'm doing right now with you. Cool. Awesome. I was going uh, to say, if you line it up right, you got the horns behind your head. Let's see. Let me... Here we go. That works. Oh, yeah. Hey, there we there go. It <laughs> 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 Fucking A, man. Yeah, man. That's cool. Well, I really can't think of any other questions for you, Jason, but my last question would be, do you have any last words for Underground Noise Webzine? Uh, total support uh, for your uh, webzine and I really appreciate the time and uh, the support and uh, be sure and check out our new album. We're looking forward to uh, releasing it and uh, be sure and check us out. You can find us on any of the streaming sites and uh, Bandcamp and all that stuff and uh, YouTube and, you know, Quinta Essentia. Evolution of Ethereal Wisdom 2023. Awesome. Everybody support Quinta Ascension and Jason and his band. And also support your local music scene. Keep your horns up. Support Underground Noise web scene. Support the underground period. And also, please subscribe to my channel. I would be happy that you did. I would like to get up to a thousand before the end of this year. And again, Jason, thanks for your time again tonight. It's been a pleasure, bro. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Alexander. Take care. Thanks. You do the same, man. Well, here we are at part two. Part two, ladies and germs. This is his uh, guitar that he was talking about earlier with the Floyd Rose and the Whammy Bar. That's fucking yeah. sick, Jason. That's the Charvel. And here is the uh, ESP. That's beautiful. There we go. Better shot there. It's nice and shiny. Yeah. And there's the angle. That's a beast of an amp. Yeah. I really like it, dude. All right. Well, I guess that wraps this up, right? I think so. Okay, cool, man. All right.